Welcome in, welcome in, week 13 edition of the Cash Process. I'm your host, Ben Hosser. I'm joined by Anthony Carson. We are here to preview the week 13 NFL DFS slate. As always, we're going to shout out our sponsors, Owner's Box Fantasy. If you guys have yet to check it out, you can see on the sidebar there, promo code karma at ownersbox.online. Get you a $500 deposit match, free DFS entry. Um, we have tons of content on the website for Owner's Box. We have cheat sheets in our discord for free for their lightning lineups format which you can get a free entry with the promo code for as well we build a lineup for their big gpp on our sunday morning show at 11 a.m eastern every week um, so be sure head over there check out owner's box fantasy ac it was uh up and down week 12 for me so main slate i missed cash by like three points it was like super tilting because i thought that i was gonna cash and then just fell out like right at the end so that was super annoying but then smashed sunday night showdown and then monday night showdown we crushed and then on fanduel i don't know if you saw but uh, i had matt ryan in and over michael pittman and if it would have been if i would use pittman instead we would have won like the nine dollar like the big like two hundred fifty thousand dollars to first on fanduel or whatever like we obviously crushed but we we were literally Pittman over ryan away from winning like yeah i, I would have won like 40k i think or something crazy so I it was woke, it was a good night after a bad main slate i woke up and uh i feel like the first thing i do besides check email is just hop into discord in the morning i was like blown away by all the screenshots on nfl sunday like main slate and then uh obviously showdown last night so congrats to all the winners which are in our discord at dfskarma.com I'm actually curious, Ben, real quick. I thought you and I had the same cash lineup this week. Um, I did cash. I had a good week on both FanDuel and DraftKings. I needed a week where I swept both sites because it's been two or three weeks since I swept both sites and I needed it. But um, where did you have a different pivot on DraftKings? Because I thought you moved to Kyler Murray and Hopkins, who I yeah. rolled out with in my core play. Yeah, I did. We we def- We had a 2v2 because I didn't have – you had what Foster Moreau? I did not have Foster Moreau, so we definitely had a different receiver. Who were who were I your three Hayden. receivers? I had Hayden Hurst, T. Higgins, okay. um, obviously Hopkins, you know. Okay, yeah. So I had Trey McBride from the Cardinals at tight end. I would have had Hurst in, but I didn't make that swap until like after lock, right? So like if I would have made that swap pre lock, I would have had oh, the two hundred to get to Hurst, but I was kind of banking on playing Geno and Adams at first, so. Yeah, I didn't have much options to, to swap tight into. Gino basically, got, I mean, Gino got there too. It was, it was. Yeah, I didn't slate. go back and add it up, um, but I mean, I literally was like three points away from winning, like yeah, at least most of my money back. Mode. So it's just. Annoying. I've had a few of those, but dude, you have you've had a hell of a year. I think you're what ten and two this year or something. Yeah, it's uh, been a great season. I'm definitely not not complaining. Like you're not going to win every week, so it, it is what it is at this point. We got a bigger slate this week, guys, which I'm looking forward to. I think we got 12 games on both FanDuel and DraftKings. It's been like 10 or 11, I think, the last few weeks. So that opens the doors for a little bit more opportunity. Um, Going to be an awesome three-max entry. It looks like DraftKings is rolling out some good stuff this week for uh, some of the single-entry stuff. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And listen, Cleveland fans, you guys know, we have to at least bring it up. This is Deshaun Watson. He's coming back, and he's coming home to Houston little narrative there this week. I mean, I'm going to consider playing him in cash games on FanDuel. I don't know about DraftKings yet, but I absolutely moving here on out. I mean, and you guys already know I'm going to have a brown stack in all my three max entry basically every week uh, moving forward. I've been waiting for Deshaun. His, he is the truth. But, Ben, how do you want to start this slate? Like on a macro level, I feel like, again, it's early on Tuesday. There's a lot of injuries, I think. There's a lot of news. Some of these slates we come on here – and we talk about kind of the week ahead, and there isn't as much, you know, uh, question marks, but there seems to be some interesting caveats. And taking a quick look at pricing and DraftKings, there's like a lot of spots I want to go. You and I were talking pre podcast. So I think this week is going to set up to be, you know, not so everybody kind of has the same lineup in cash games. I think this week could be intriguing to have a couple of different options. What are your thoughts? I mean, because that's how I look at it early on from the, you know, on set on Tuesday here. Yeah, I think this is a much much better slate than the last few that we've had. Um, just off 
first glance. I think it looks a lot better. I think there's there's actually three games with over 50 total, which, I mean, we've been having the last few weeks, I feel like we've had one game that's like 49, and then everything else is low 40. So there's actually three pretty decent games, and I, I would include, you know, like even Dolphins, Niners, like it doesn't have a 50 total, it's 46 and a half, but that's still a good game uh, that I would consider. So uh, yeah, I think this is a much better slate overall than the last few that we've had the last couple weeks. And we got some really popular spots like the Bengals Chiefs game is going to be just loaded with fantasy points. We got the Coors Field game with the Lions and Jags, which is going to be a ton of volume in that game and a lot of points there, especially the Jags are looking good. And they got a lot of playmakers, um, Chargers, Raiders, man, like that's just a glorious fantasy spot this week. So, again, you can see there's a lot of spots that we'll be able to go, right? Um you know, looking back to last week, one quick mention I want to I want to point out before we start talking about quarterback running back is I do think you made the right move, though, Ben. You know, we talk about, you know, losing in the one o'clock slate, not once, but twice this year. I've had to make adjustments where I've been down and you got to just look yourself, you know, square in the face like you have to make a tough decision, even though you don't want to. And sometimes you got to make a pivot if you just know that you're behind and you need to get weird. Both times it did not work out for me this year. I just clicked on the wrong guys. Um, but I still think process-wise, I made the right choices, even though I lost, if that makes sense. So it's something you guys should yeah. all consider out there. And especially on FanDuel, too. It was a big slate that I ended up pivoting. It helped me out. So I, I would consider that. You if, know, you wanna, uh, if you want to tilt along with me, I actually um, – I like to play a little – on the whenever the, the Sunday slate after Thanksgiving, I feel like people aren't as locked in. So I like to play a little bit weirder. And up until Saturday night, I actually had – I had Mike White and Garrett Wilson – in cash and yeah. i was like the weather just scared me off so much that i moved off it and of that was they, sickening uh, they just went off so that was yeah it was perfect i had gear wilson in my, my main tournament roster and same thing i don't know why I, I don't know if it's because it came out of michael carter too late like everybody else which ben and i talked pre-pod like guys it still was the right play i mean yeah he got hurt but he wasn't really producing anyways but i mean i came off wilson and i was pretty upset about it too not for cash games. So I was not considered, I just didn't need him. Like, and I think the the takeaway there is, and again, this is just how I like to build. I think Ben, historically you do too, is there were so many cheap running backs that anytime a slate gifts you the cheap price running backs, again, you rather to run the, this season. It's, I always say this DFS is a season long game. It's not a weekly game. Ironically, no, that doesn't make sense. But over the course of 18 games, we're playing DFS NFL. If you have three or four slates like we did last week with Jeff Wilson and, and White, just super cheap, super high volume, like in the smash spots, you got to take those guys. And then guess what? Michael Carter opened up in the flex at 5,400. We had to take him then. I mean, it was the right play. So I just couldn't fit Garrett Wilson in my lineup. Like there was a chance to get to Mark Andrews, but I I needed to play T. Higgins. So like that was kind of, I think, the 2v2 that you and I and some others were messing with i mean garrett wilson and mark andrews was doable but obviously you had to come off t higgins so i was not going to come off t higgins who i knew was a lock and the weather did sway me off that way but again i came off garrett wilson in my main tournament roster and had michael carter there so i got sucked into that vortex and that was a mistake looking back like if i'm going all in on this michael carter guy and everybody else's i mean i should probably pick it off him in my main tournament roster enough about that last week then start us off at quarterback Let's start talking about quarterbacks this week, including our boy, Deshaun Watson. Is there any chance you are considering him? He is pretty priced up there. was a little bit upset with DraftKings, but FanDuel, I think he's in play. Yeah, so absolutely loaded slate this week. Watson, I think, is fine tournament play. I cannot play someone that hasn't played a game in like two years in cash, I don't think, uh, despite the matchup, but... I think for tournaments, he's definitely in play. I mean, we have all the big names on this slate, right? Mahomes, Hurts, Lamar, Joe Burrow, you know, going against Mahomes. We got Justin Herbert up there, too. Uh, really, really strong quarterback slate. So I think, like, I I'm not sure, like, how value will shake out and all that stuff. So I don't know where the chalk is necessarily going to concentrate. It might be a little bit more spread out than the past few weeks. I think Herbert immediately sticks out just because, A, that's one of the better games on the slate, and B, the Raiders have nothing uh, defensively right now. They're, they're so banged up on defense. They don't have anyone. That's partially why Gino was like such a strong play last week uh, for his price. Herbert, 
he's kind of priced in between the mid tier and the top tier, but I mean, they throw the ball a ton. Las Vegas, really, really bad defense. So I do think Herbert sticks out specifically, um, aside from, you know, the, the Burrow Mahomes game. And then you have Hertz up there as well. Uh, dropping down a little bit. I, I think Trevor Lawrence at 5,900, he's looked really good. Obviously a good spot against Detroit and one of the better games. Um, there is like a meme, AC. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's like a meme that the late games never go off. So we're putting that to the test this week, right? Because we have like two 250 over-unders in the in the late window. So we're going to find out if the late games go off or not this week. Is that a meme? I mean, I haven't seen yeah. that. Yeah, there, there, there's always like a joke, like I'm saving all this room for the late games, but they never do anything. So, Well, this week there's going to be points scored. I mean, you're – if you're winning and have no PMR left, you're you're absolutely dead going into the four o'clock games, which is the the tricky thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot to add there. I, I guess just you know, early on, I mean, I'm gonna take a hard look at Burrow, depending on how the the slate shakes out. Um, you know, a little weird there. Sometimes, and, man, I love the line there and handle with Lawrence. Ultimately, I didn't play. I didn't need him. Um, I went with Kyle Murray, but I think Lawrence right now, early on, gun to head, just because there's so much fantasy points that are going to be scored this week. I think we're going to have to go down to our traditional route and our roots than how, how we did it years ago. Like, I think we're going to have to pay down and go to Lawrence immediately, just taking a look at this slate. Unless, again, there's massive value of running back or wide receiver that opens up. As much as I want to play all these guys up top, Lawrence against the Lions in the Dome game. Again, we talk about Coors Field. If you guys don't know that analogy, it's the baseball in us, in our DNA. I mean, that's where more points are just guaranteed by default. He should have some rushing upside. I know he didn't have it last week, but he seems too cheap. And then lastly, we do like to sprinkle in some tournament leverage, three max entry type stuff. Take a look at Kenny Pickett, 5,200 this week against Atlanta. I know the narrative is going to be Atlanta runs too much, therefore they're sucked in the vortex. I don't know. I mean, again, dome game. I, I always like to go with that. It's just an interesting pivot um, that I'm looking for, like a super cheap guy uh, this week. But also Jared Goss right there at 5,300. But he seems to never get it done as much as we want him to. Yeah, go- Goff is interesting too whenever he's at home. And then I, I would just say Tua, uh, like – San Fran's kind of a little bit of a pass funnel just because their run defense is so good. And Tua yeah. is kind of like Burrow. Like, I think you like you can just play him every week pretty much with his passing options. So I think he's interesting for tournaments. All right, let's go to running back. Again, there's a lot of guys. Um, yeah. Man, there's a lot of guys. Yeah, um, I think so. I kind of think early on, like, we'll wait and see with injury stuff. Like, we don't know if Mixon's playing. There's concerns about Josh Jacobs. Um, we don't know if Raheem Mostert is going to play or not, all this stuff. So I think that kind of those injuries are going to dictate the slate. I think kind of the mid-tier is going to get a, a lot of ownership again with people wanting to play, like, these big quarterbacks and stuff. Like, we have Jeff Wilson, assuming Mostert's out at 6,100. Tough matchup, but... Um, you know, he's going to be the workhorse in an actual like game that should be close unlike them just winning by like 30 points pretty much in the first quarter instantly last week. Um, Latavius Murray's 5,300 P Ryan, if Mixon's out six K, uh, even Kenny Walker is seven K and then Travis Etienne, assuming he is healthy and ready to go. Like they've said he is against Detroit at 6,400. So I think that's kind of the tier that's going to get a lot of ownership in like cash builds. Um, someone that stuck out to me, we were talking about it, but Sam and I and, and Matt were talking about it earlier, but I mean, Las Vegas kind of sticking with Herbert, uh, what I was just talking about, they give up the most passing yards to running backs. Um, their bottom three in DVOA to passes out of the backfield. And, you know, that fits right into Austin Eckler's game, 11 catches again last week. So I think at least for tournaments, Eckler really sticks out, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to fit 8,500 in, uh, our cash lineups. Man, you guys already got the group text right going. Yeah, already? we're we're Early locked. We're week. we're locked in because oh we've been, we've God. we've been struggling the last like two weeks, so we're just locked in. We're <laughs> breaking. That the is Sunday. amazing. Honestly, hats off to you guys because it's early in the week. And the fact that you guys are always already in that grind mode that pleases me. I'm I'm happy to hear that. So yeah, I won't harp on all those guys. I'll I'll just add a few things. Eckler's just a freaking lock. I mean, can we make him fit? I don't know. Um, 
tune in later in the week to Ben's content and the rest of the team stuff and the rest of the podcast and in Discord. He just seems so safe to your, every point you just listed. Um, I will disagree on Kenneth Walker. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I ain't playing Kenneth Walker this week against that Rams front seven. Um, I think you can throw on the Rams a bit. I'm not going there. Um, ETN is absolutely a lock this week in cash games. I mean, granted, let's wait for the injury news. That's why I said I started this podcast. Like, is there a chance he doesn't play? I don't think so. But, man, if he doesn't, Hasty's going to be – you know, the, the talk, the chalk du jour of the week. So just, you know, stay tuned later in the week. I want to add a couple of things is, you know, the, the, the three max entry thing, the pivot. I mean, Nick Chubb's the play, the slate. I mean, he's the, the play again. It's simple this week narrative with Watson. You want a Watson stack, do it with Cooper and people's Jones and, and Njoku. And if you don't do that in another lineup, I promise you guys, you must have a Nick Chubb lineup. I don't know which is going to go off if it's Chubb, or the Watson stack, one of them is going to go nuclear this week. So 8,000 is probably too high for anybody to consider. Nobody ever plays Chubb on, on DraftKings, so he will be one of my main tournament rosters. Um, I'm trying to think what else, Ben. There's just so many guys. Like, man, I mean, nobody plays Barkley anymore. CMC is going to get all the looks this week, right? I mean, you want to talk about him real quick? No Elijah Mitchell. I mean, yeah, they did. They brought in Jordan. Not... They brought in Jordan Mason last week, but we'll see. They still have like uh, Davis Price and some other guys they can activate. Um, I don't know. It's just it's been tougher to spend up over eight K for running backs when we've had so many weeks with like six to seven K guys that rate out so well. So we'll have to wait and see later in the week. But for tournaments, you can always consider those guys. It's just they really like if you're spending. Even Eckler, like if you're spending 85 for Eckler and you have presumably, say, an ETN at 64, like Eckler really had, like he needs over 30 to like really, really smash, you know, for to where you would feel good about it. So it's just tougher to spend up for those guys. But yeah. I do think like those guys are in play, obviously. Josh Jacobs, if he's healthy, is in play for sure. We'll have to wait and see. And then I, I wanted to yeah. bring up Damian Pierce on the other side of that. I mean the Browns. You can run on the Browns. Fifty nine hundred is is cheap, and I feel like people. Oh, he he was chalk for like three weeks in a row, but now it seems like it seems like people are off. But dude, he's gonna get all the red zone looks, you know. So if they get in the yeah, red zone, be... I mean he's gonna score. He's got the you, he's, he has the second you. best. He's fifty nine hundred. He has the second best red zone share on the slate. Um, and then but Kenneth the Walker. Is, look at the last few weeks. Yeah, you know? Aaron I mean, Donald is out, I'm pretty sure, also for the Rams, just so you know. Oh, he is? I didn't, yeah. I did not I, know Well, that. I'm pretty sure that, he has a high thing. ankle sprain, and they have, like, nothing did, to play for. So, I'm assuming... Did he not he finish that game with KC? Uh, I don't know if he came back in or not. I just know they said it was a high ankle sprain, and there was talk about, you know, maybe shutting him down, obviously, because they already don't have Cooper Cup, and they're not... I mean, they're just... Uh, like, the team is just done. For what so. it's worth... I did lose a, a bet on Seattle last week, so I'm still I'm still a little tilted on them. But that, <laughs> well, it, Kenneth that Walker has not been efficient whatsoever, but his role is so good. Yeah. Like his role is so good. I mean, he's right there. He's third in, in red zone share. Um, you know, he's up there in terms of just overall opportunity as well. If you look at all running backs, like he just gets the ball so much. But he, to your point, he has not been efficient. So yeah, I agree. It's with that. interesting looking at BetKarma.com guys like. You know, I'm not really truly an alien. Sometimes I joke in Discord with the emojis, but there is a ton of sharp money coming in on the Seahawks right now. Also, the Raiders, what it's worth. I know we were talking about Josh Jacobs. So if you want to think about things like, you know, making a bet early in the week and quote unquote gambling on potential injury news, I mean, there is edges to be had. Like that's how I do most of my betting is early in the week and I kind of evaluate some of the injury news and how I can work it in my favor. But again, if you go to betkarma.com, this tool is literally free. It does the work for you. It shows the bet percentage, the handle percentage, and then it just does the math to show you the sharp percentage. So, again, massive money on the Raiders and, and the Seahawks for what it's worth. And, it, again, it is early in the week, um, but it is something to look at. And, of course, you can do that with the totals as well, and that also helps, like, your DFS logic and thinking about things. Last thing before we go to wide receiver, I know we didn't talk about Leonard Fournette slash White, but I think Fournette's coming back this week. Um, again, you might want to stay tuned to that. I got one guy, Ben, before we leave here. I know I brought up Nick Chubb. I could see this guy getting lost in the sauce this week again because he's still in a backfield with two backs and all that. 
I feel like Aaron Jones is just like screaming to me, not only cash play. And again, I probably won't go there in cash, but 6,900, he's just looks like the type of play that's like a slate breaker. You want to talk about a Josh Jacobs going for 51, you know, Aaron Jones could easily go for 43 this week against this terrible Chicago defense. I mean, they just, they've lost so many guys. Um, and again, he just, I can see him getting lost because there's so many good plays in the six, seven, eight K range. So just wanted to bring that up for tournaments. Yeah. Chicago, very bad run defense. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, moving on to receiver, tons of big names at the top. I mean, you have Jefferson, Tyreek, Waddle, AJ Brown, Devante. Um, uh, I'm assuming Jamar Chase is going to be back because that's kind of what they said. So you have him and T Higgins, um, Amon Ross St. Brown, 7,100 as well. So tons of options here. I think as always, you know, like Tyreek is going to project very well. He's going to even project as a value at his price um, because of his role. Like he's going to be good. Keenan Allen at 6,500, I think is really, really strong cash play again. Did get it in the end zone last week. Fits in with Herbert, which I was talking about. Um, so I could see Keenan being pretty popular again. Uh, Garrett Wilson, I could see being popular again. So he was kind of like the chalk last week. And then we got to the weekend and like everyone did like a galaxy brain. And they're like, why are we playing like chalk Garrett Wilson in the rain? And then like people got off him. So <laughs> it's a great, it's a good matchup again. Uh, Minnesota secondary is, is a very good. Um, so I think people could go back to him at 53. Um, you have Christian Kirk at 63, Juju at 57. Like, there's some good mid-tier guys, and then, obviously, some pretty good guys at the top as well. So, it's a pretty loaded receiver slate. I, I like Peoples-Jones again at 49, too. We, we get this Amari Cooper home road split. So, like, the jury is out, kind of out still because he went off against Detroit. But, like, people are, like, not counting that as a road game because, like, it was, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, like, the game got yeah. moved so like it did i don't know it doesn't it doesn't count as like a true road game because the game wasn't supposed to be where it was played at so i think people's jones is too cheap uh, at least for like tournaments but cash i could see keenan being a lock i could see garrett wilson going in uh, terry mclaurin seems to like for whatever reason terry mclaurin always gets steamed by the time we get to the weekend and comes in like way higher on that i think i just I love him. Ohio well, I State. played him in tournaments like a few weeks ago, and I was like, "Oh, t- he'll be low owned." And then he was like, "He was like thirty percent." I was like, "And then he was high owned last week too." So the he'll team just, get run. The team, they just remind me of the Falcons. Like, ironically, they just played. It's like all they want to do is run. Heineke stinks at the end of the day. Like, I know they got a little swag going right now, but yeah, I just I fade him more often than not. Plus, there's still multiple pass catchers there that kind of all have the same upside, in my opinion. But yeah, the guys up top, it's like early on. I feel like it's like no to all of them. Again, we're we're really talking cash games right now. So of course in tournaments, get your exposure. You did bring up a really good point about like the pass catching with Tyreek and you mentioned Tua. That's something I want to take a note on for because I sometimes even I lose my thought process later in the week as far as my tournament builds go. And I could just see people getting so scared of San Francisco defense, which totally makes sense and I get it. But uh the coach just came from there too. I don't think you can run on them. Like this could be a weird spot where two and Tyreek and Waddle just do their thing at low own. So it's just take a note of that. Um, yeah. The one thing I'll have, and again, I'm not disagreeing with you, Ben, but when I was watching the game with the chargers, I just felt like, I don't know, like as much as we were kind of hyping Keenan and discord, I don't know if I can go back there. Like he's just, he's just, he's just met, you know, like I feel like I'd rather play Christian Kirk. And again, this is all things considered. Maybe we have price for all these guys. But if I have to pick, I think I want Kirk because, again, I'm going to stick with the logic of give me the course field effect. Give me the dome game. I know it's crossing hairs because the you know Raiders-Chargers game is in a good spot too. But, man, I think I want to start right now with the Sun God at 7,100 and Christian Kirk at 63. Tag him with, you know, Lawrence. And even if it's ETN, like just – you're just so exposed to that game. And guess what? If it fails, you're definitely losing in cash. But if it goes off like it should, you have multiple points um, to that line of construction. So that's kind of how it looks like I'm going to build early in the week. Man, how about Chris Godwin? This guy's just like nobody plays him this year, and all he does is hit value, I feel like. Um, I don't know. The Saints, I mean, they're struggling, man, in their secondary. Um, that's an interesting spot at 6, yeah, that's a, I don't think that's people- a good point. I was, I was going to bring him up. Definitely – interested there um 
I wanted to bring Garrett the Wilson Pitt, is going to be the Pittsburgh off. guys are too cheap be, too. The Pittsburgh guys are too cheap. I mean, that Minnesota game, like we haven't even really t- talked about that. That's why the slate is amazing. Like I mean, again, dome game. I know it's two good defenses, but I don't know, man. Like as time goes on, I mean, Minnesota secondary is not that good, but you could still see. Jer- we all said the same thing about Jefferson and uh, kind of on Thanksgiving, like oh, a very tough matchup against one of the best cornerbacks, if not the best in the NFL. And look what he does, like. I'm not going to be intimidated by Sauce Gardner or the other corner who's playing really well either. I mean, that game could just explode too. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to play Garrett Wilson, man. Like, you know he's going to be mega chalk in cash games. 5,300 seems fair against that bad secondary, you know. And Minnesota continues to get exposed. He just got exposed by the Patriots. Like, why wouldn't Garrett Wilson do the same thing and friends? From the Jets, yeah, you have you know? uh, uh Pickens and Deontay right there too. Also, I had Sunday to Monday pricing pulled up as well, so we don't have to worry about the Bucks because it's it's prime time, so they're not on the slate. Ah, that's my bad there. Um, yeah, I, I had that up as well, but I think that covers it. I mean, is is there anyone else? I mean, I'm sure we'll probably have some it's... value open up. Um, for well, tournaments, I just, I just I mean... asked you about Zeta. Oh we God, just, we dude, that was. <laughs> Dude, Sam, Bro, he's Sam, got, hypes up, he's got Sam hypes up Zay Jones every week. And, like, literally, I'm not lying, the one week, the one week that he doesn't play him, he just goes absolutely <laughs> nuclear, dude. Sam it's insane. probably crying forever. Oh, he, he was. 24 Sam, Sam should be rich right now. Like, he literally, I think he's played Zay Jones 11 weeks and did not play him last week. And he just got, like, 12 balls. <laughs> That's so I good. do think he's going to be owned in cash games, though, because, again, for everything we're talking about with that game, and he's cheaper than Christian Kirk. Again, I don't know how Price is going to slide out, but, dude, we, can't, we cannot dismiss the fact that he's had 24 targets in two weeks. Like, how are they going to go away from a guy like that? Like, even if he only gets seven, eight targets at 4,900, I'd almost prefer him over Christian Kirk. I mean, again, just for the salary difference. So, um, yeah. last thing before we move on. Here's a guy, and again, just if you need a punt for tournaments, whatever. I swear to God, this guy, I go overexpose him every single week, week, and he hits value. If I just need a guy to get me 12 points, 10 points, Nico Collins, 4,200. He's always $4,000, and the guy scores 10 to 12 points a week. Again, if you 3X, it doesn't matter your price point. They're going to have to throw, keep up with the Browns. He's literally one of my favorite DFS plays every single week. And I will bring him up again. I said in Discord last week I had – 50% 50% of Nico Collins, and he helped me cash a couple uh, a bubble-type GPP rosters just because, like, the rest of my roster, you know, can hit its ceiling potential. Yeah, you could even, like, mini-stack him with Najoku or Peoples-Jones. Najoku, we're going to talk about at tight end, but uh, we can segue over there after that. All the big dogs are on this slate. Uh, Kelsey, Andrews, Kittle, TJ Hawkinson is up there. Um, Kelsey, I mean, I feel like you, you have to have some some tournament exposure to him. He's never going to be a cash play because he's 7,900. But we've also talked about how, especially in, even in small field tournaments, you can play two tight ends with Kelsey being the second one because he's basically a receiver. Like, you're not really taking on much risk there. Um, he's just basically a $7,900 receiver. So um, you have to have some Kelsey every week, I feel like. I mean, he's literally – I mean, what he's been doing is just crazy, um, especially for, for a tight end. So I, I want Kelsey in tournaments – Cash games, Najoku is a really good play, I think, at 3,900. They've kind of been waiting for Watson to come back all this time. He had a great game last week. It's kind of always been said that he could lead this team in receiving yards. He's had some big games this season, obviously good matchups. So I like him at 3,900. Foster Moreau at 3,600 in one of the best games on the slate. He scored last week, finally, got it, got in the end zone. Although he, did, he scored the other week as well. But, um, I, uh, you know, at 3,600, he's going to grade out well. Um, Tyler Conklin, little revenge game back in Minnesota um, at 3,100. I think he is going to be in play for me, but I'll probably be saving per usual uh, in cash games at, at tight end this week, I think. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's like no doubt. I mean, David Njoku, give me the Joker. Give me one of the highest ceiling guys really on the slate, and he's 3,900 every single week. Um, we both know he can go off, but he also has an amazing floor. I mean, he did it with Jacoby. He's going to do it with Watson. So I am starting my tight end roster construction with David Njoku. There's no doubt about it. And to your point, yeah, like oh, I feel like in my tournaments, I always have exposure somewhere to the uh, the high expensive guys because 
you just could be drawing dead, you know, without him, you know, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, Foster Moreau. I mean, every week he's in the lineup for me because all he does is hit value. His ceiling sucks, but he legit hits value almost every week. Um, yeah. If you want to finish it at, at defense, you know, I'm kind of like making a roster right now, guys, as we're going through this podcast and, you know, even with Austin Eckler early in the week, like it's, it's definitely doable then. Um, it, I don't think it's going to be one you love, but it's it's definitely doable with Eckler. But, um, yeah, it's just uh, something to look at early here. Yeah, I mean, defense, Steelers at 26 stick out. I know they're on the road, but, I mean, I'll always consider them with, with T.J. Watt back. Um, anyone in, in the 2 to 3K range I, I think is in play. You know, like I could see, you know, Chiefs are 35. I mean, they were – owned last week I, I don't think they'll be like quite as owned this week um, but obviously we know Burrow takes a lot of sacks so you can consider them as well but I think Steelers sticks out and maybe like the Jets um, stick out as well I, I've played the Jets a good amount this year I feel like at defense yeah I mean even going down to Miami like there's just I feel like I pay down in cash games every week it's I don't I don't even know I, I really try not to overthink defense I try to make one of my best rosters possible without taking you know the complete bombshell defense but uh you know it sucks i, I hope they change the rules down the road here because it would make DraftKings so much more fun if there was essentially a double flex type of scenario like I our would, friends i would rather play a oh, kicker i would rather play a kicker than defense yeah yeah like 100 percent. um ben i guess the last question because again I, I have a cash lineup that i did based on this podcast i know you brought up stevenson i just wanted to bring that up again i mean the Harris, I think, is out this week. Correct? Yeah, he's he's Damian not a, he he's not expected to play. So Stevenson is just going to be so owned. That um, that is uh, that's which, the uh, that's the Thursday night game though. Because you got, I think you have Thursday. Oh, wow. I think you have th- you have Thursday through Monday <laughs> pricing pulled up. There we go. That's why we did yeah. not bring it up. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, finish on that note. So you guys know the drill. DFSKarma.com. You can access everything under the sun, not only for NFL but NBA too. Guys, golf's coming around the corner. And then betcarmer.com, you can access all our tool simulations for all the spreads, totals, and props. Anything else, Ben? No, um, I'm looking to get back on track. Um, we still have the code active until 12 So if you want to sign up, you want to check out the core plays, you can head to dfscarmer.com slash pricing. Promo code TURKEY, all caps, gets you 25% off any package you want. Um, you know, So if you want to try MVP, we have NBA, NFL, World Cup is still going on. We have... Um, I think golf has died down a little bit, but we have esports to go along with that. And then if you yeah. want to just, you know, you want to try football out or basketball, whatever you guys want, uh, you can still get 25% off through December 1st uh, with that promo code. All right. Good luck this week, guys. We'll talk to you next week.